this week on My Classic Car. We'll make our way out to Jay Leno's garage of killer classics and mechanical marvels. On this visit, we'll check out a couple of Jay's Hudson Hornets and take one out for a California cruise. Plus, we'll take a look at drum to disc brake conversion kits. I'm Dennis Gage. Thanks for tuning in to My Classic Car, home of the Certified Car Nut. Well, this week I'm out in California, one of my favorite places, Jay Leno's Garage. He's always got something wild cooking. Let's see what's happening. Jay, how you? Why, hello, Dennis. Good to see you again. <laughs> what? What? Now that's an oil can. Yes, <laughs> sir. That is indeed. When an the oil men can. were men and the women were glad of it. Wooden ships, <laughs> iron men. Yes, sir. Is that is that an oil can? Are you just happy to see there me? There you go. <laughs> that's what it is. Hey, it's a family show. <laughs> Well, this here is an 1866 uh, steam engine. This is not a car. This is a steam engine. No, this is a steam engine. Uh, this was built when, uh, or it was designed when Lincoln was president. Uh, this is what made America. You know, when we think of the 1860s, you always think of cowboys and Indians and that type of thing. We don't think of the industrial age, but this was really the birth of it. This is what uh, Thomas Edison used to demonstrate electricity to run his dynamo. Big giant steam engine, very similar to this one. And this, this is the massive flywheel? That's the flywheel. This, this thing weighs 11 tons. This is all one casting. Uh, to think that they moved this across the country with block and tackle and horse and wagon. It was, it's actually it's so big it's two pieces, right? Yes, two I mean, pieces. The interesting thing is this was built before what we call standardization. So each one of these nuts, that bolt only fits that nut. Really? The same thing as that. And you need a different wrench for each side of these. Each one of these would, was, was handmade and put together. This engine is, as I said, 11 tons and rated at 125 horsepower, which doesn't sound like much by today's standards, but back in the day, that was, that was pretty, pretty impressive. Uh, you can feel heat starting to come through the pipe. Let's yeah, see. You've always, I think I'll stand back. You've always Let's been more comfortable with steam than I, I am, Jay. Steam is, holy cow. There she goes. It feels like it should have those those things with the arcs going up. I know, I know, I know. I know it does, but it's it's pretty amazing. This is your cam. See your cam moving your valves up and down? Okay, now that cam moves according to this. See see how this is risen up? Oh yeah. Okay. You heard the expression balls out or balls to the wall? This is where it comes from. When a steam engine is running full power, the balls are all the way out. Now you see, now you notice this. Yeah, I always thought it was something different. No, no, no. <laughs> this, this, cam, this, this cam is shifted. And as you can see, it's not pushing the valve up as much because now the engine is running at just about its top speed. And it will just sit here and do that forever. This will sit here for 100 years and run like I mean, when we pulled this engine out, it hadn't run in almost a hundred years, and it's just wait. It just sits and waits, you know, it's like an alligator in a swamp. It sits there for a year, and then boom. And you got your tachometer here. This is your throttle here. This is your drip valve. What this does is you open this when you start a steam engine, because as you know, water does not compress, so you want to make sure it's steam. So to get all the condensation out, you open this up. Water drips out. As you close that, your engine will run more efficiently. And you have this for... Well, it's just a fascinating piece of history. If you want to know where you're going, I think with energy and power, you kind of need to see where we've been, you know? It's amazing. And this what? is 1866. That one there, that one there is 1832. We don't have this one together yet. That's the next thing. Next time you're here, we'll run this now one. There's there's some that's balls. A, there you go. That's it. Kahunes, all right. That's, that's right. That's uh, You don't want to mess with those. <laughs> that's a big one. <laughs> Next yeah. time on that one, right? Exactly. exactly. Well, do you have any, any any cars though? I mean, like internal combustion or anything like that? You know something? I've got a Hudson that's about 90 years newer than this. In fact, I got two Hudsons. Let's go take a look. All right, let's do it. Coming up, we'll check out a couple of Jay Leno's Hudson Hornets. But first, we'll take a look at drum to disc brake conversion kits for your ride. My Classic Car is brought to you by Grundy Worldwide Collector Car Insurance. Well, hey, 
today I got Rick Schmidt from National Parts Depot in the shop with me today. Rick, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing great, Dennis. How are you? Great to see you again. Uh, man, you know, you guys, uh, you're always coming up with something new. Uh, and today it looks like, I would say, it's, it's got something to do with brakes. Yeah, I've got, I'm really excited about this today because this is not only, drum to, to disc conversion kits are nothing new in no, the uh, classic around. car market. But this is a brand new uh, deal for us and what I'm excited about is it's going to save people an awful lot of money. That's, that's uh, always a good thing. What I brought today <laughs> is, is uh, NPD's new Street Bandit line of uh, drum to disc conversions. And uh, our Street Bandit line is a uh, is a at the wheel kit matched up with if should you want it a uh, a booster and master cylinder kit for uh, 64 through 72 Chevelles or 67 through 69 uh, uh, Camaros or Firebirds that get that offers the same level of quality and uh, completeness of the uh, name brand kits that we've historically been uh, carrying. From, from many of the same suppliers that MPD has used for years, years and all mm -hmm. of our customers know and trust, but uh, packed into a kit that comes at an incredible savings, you can do just the at-the-wheel kit for anywhere between four, uh, 450 and uh, 540 bucks. And if you want to go with the, with the new booster and master cylinder to all the lines to take it all the way to the firewall, it's wow. an extra 250 So there's considerable savings here without sacrificing quality. Most of what you see here on this table is predominantly American made. So really these are being manufactured by some of the biggest names in the biz to their to their specs. Exactly, yes. But it just doesn't carry the brand name. That's right. Nice. That's right. Very nice. Yeah, it's a nice setup and, and and we're stocking them at all four of our super centers. So you're dealing with NPD, you know you're going to get that great NPD fast uh, shipping service. It's not a drop ship that's going to come out of who knows where, who right. knows when. And if you have any problems, if there's if for any reason something's not working correctly or a piece got missed out of the kit or something, we've got you covered because we've got all the inventory. It's you're dealing with NPD, somebody you can trust. You're not dealing with some with some manufacturer you didn't even realize when you well, got into and, it. Well, and 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 with the manufacturer, it's you know, in their defense, it's not their business. Their business is making this stuff. Your business That's right. is not, getting it to the hobby. They're not practiced at dealing with the individual retail customer, and they're also uh, not uh, their their time schedules. Uh, you Don't know, permit that. Their priorities <laughs> are, are are not in serving you quickly. That's why NPD. You know, we buffer all that for our customers. Yeah. We take complete control of the. Uh, and of as the you do with so many things, as you. Put it all together into a kit so the guest works out of it. Did I need this? Did I? And that's what I'm looking at here. And this, the the what the drum to disc conversion basic is from here over, right? Eh? Yeah, this two thirds of the table is your at the wheel kit. At the wheel. That's four hundred and fifty dollars for everything you see here. This is all brand new components. N nothing's rebuilt. And uh, for a little bit extra money, for five hundred forty bucks, you can get two inch drop spindles and that, and, uh, you know. and drop the front end of your car two inches at the same time that you do the uh, disc conversion. Everything. I mean, right down to the, the wheel bearings, eh? That's right. Right down to the wheel bearings. We've got Timken races and bearings. This is all high-quality stuff at a really affordable price. And, I, th I think people are really going to be pleased packaged. with it. completely yeah. yes. Now, upstream of that is, is the other third of the table. Right, right. A new booster and master cylinder. A lot of times people already have converted to power brakes or, mm -hmm. they've, or they've got any combination of stuff that they might have bought at the parts store or gotten out of a junkyard car mm -hmm. to upgrade their car as far as power so brakes go. they might not need this. They may not need that, so we've give, we're giving you that type of flexibility that if all you really need is to handle what at the wheel, you get the Here at the is. wheel kit. But if, if you, you want, want to do the whole deal, you order everything up and you're you're in for you know like seven hundred dollars for everything from the firewall all the way down to the car power power disc brakes for a full drum to disc conversion. Yeah, using quality quality components instead of who knows what came from who know where type <laughs> components. And when you have a problem, you know you know who are who are you going to call? Yeah, right. Well, you know, there's just nothing like uh, being able to stop a car when you want to. It helps, it, doesn't it? it? it really doesn't does. it sure keeps the shine on the paint when you can. And start. there's nothing like drum to disc conversions. True. Well, hey, if you want to learn anything more about these great drum to disc conversions from NPD, log on to myclassiccar.com. Do you have these for 56 uh, Lincoln Premieres yet, or are you still working on that? You're working I don't on that know. one, right? We're doing some volume studies <laughs> right now. You're the number one on the list. Yeah, not, We're yeah, still looking yeah, for number yeah, two. Visit eastwoodgarage.com, the premier website for unique vehicle restoration tools and supplies. Next, we'll get back out to Jay Leno's garage to get a look at his classic Hudson Hornets. Welcome back to My Classic Car. We're in Hudson Lane. Yeah, these are, you know, people always ask me, oh, how do you get started in collector car hobby? What are some good cars to get started on? Because it can be kind of pricey. Well, it these can days. be pricey. Well, you know, everything isn't Ferraris and Duesenbergs and things like that. 
There's a lot of independents. There's Hudson, there's Kaiser, there's Nash. There's the orphans. There's Rambler, the orphans. The orphans, yeah. yeah. And you know, Hudson's were the best handling and one of the fastest cars of the 50s. In the early 50s, they won all the NASCAR championships. The things I like about these early cars is it predates power steering, it predates power brake. So consequently, when you drive it, there's a real mechanical feel. They got as much feel, they tried to mechanically get as much weight out of the steering as possible. So it actually drives very nice. I mean, I think the average person today would consider it a heavy steering car, mm -hmm. but if you drive a lot of these cars, it's just direct, you know, like the McLaren F1, like the Lotus, where there's no... They're pretty separated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th there's nothing to keep you from, yeah. unlike the Chrysler's, which has the fingertip <laughs> steering, which is another interesting thing. This has a more of a driver's car. You're really connected to it. You're connected yeah. to what's going on it's through the steering wheel to the road. Yeah. I mean, it's just... I had one of these when I was in college. I had the four-door Hudson. And we have two Hudsons here. This was built to be sort of the family car. The only thing we did to it, I upgraded it to 12-volt electric so I could put air conditioning in it. But other than that, it's a totally stock car. And this is a 19, what, 1950? This is a 51. 51. 51. has the automatic transmission, pretty slow, but a nice driving car. It's a nice riding, driving car. And for a mid-level car, this would be the equivalent of maybe Oldsmobile. Uh -huh. You know, in the pecking order of mm -hmm. where it fit in. But look at the interior and things. Look, at, it has beautiful interior. So the, all these, there's like, there's at least three different fabrics. Here. You got at least three different fabrics. <laughs> and this is a lost art. I've got an old guy who does these for me. This is the way they did it at the factory. This is metal, but it's grain to look like wood, and that's the way it came from the factory. And, and all this, this was all chromed? I mean, it was this... all chromed, yeah, yeah. Notice the uh, driving lamp right there. You got the spotlight on the side, the big bench seat. And even in the factory, these, that entire dash is this, this. Right, the whole thing. And it was all done by hand. All done by hand, yeah. You know, it's very easy to put uh, seat belts in classic cars. It's really, really simple. And I, I recommend it to, uh, to everybody because it, it, really, it really makes a huge, <laughs> you know, these cars. Those, Metal that's dash. Not, that's not a collapsible steering wheel. That's a spear. <laughs> It's aimed directly at you. Jaguar has, even has theirs has a cone on it to make sure it actually penetrates the chest cavity. So that's why you want to. Run I think the that's probably wise. That's probably so. The engine in this flathead six. Flathead six. Can we can we open it up? We'll take a look. See, here's another thing that you know. The this visor? is something I always thought these were kind of cool. I never realized how valuable they were until I started driving around the California sunshine. It keeps all the heat off the dashboard. Yeah. It keeps your dashboard from, from buckling in the heat. And when you run the air conditioner, it actually runs cooler uh, because of this. Wow. Oh, and it's a twin H. Twin H power. This originally just had the two barrel on it because he was a family man and you're trying wow. to save gas. So right. He ran with a two barrel. But even the, even the twin H is, is twin one barrels. But are they just really big? Yeah, no, yes, two one barrels. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> Well, they're, they're really cool and distinctive. I, nobody really did anything that looked quite like that under the hood. This was really a Hudson thing, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, you know, like uh, a lot of people were not able to change with the times. The V8 was coming. Henry Ford saw it in 32 and had his V8. And then General Motors, Ford, they all had V8s. I mean, this is, it's like where that drink, hey, I could have had a V8. Mm. Why would you buy a six-cylinder flathead when you could have the overhead valve you know, but these these have got character. Though. Yeah, I mean, they're, these are they're cool a lot cars. of fun to drive. You know, you can carry everyone you know, and the, the cool thing about these things is they are so big. In the front seat, you actually wouldn't even be able to fight the other passenger because <laughs> they're, so they're so far, far away. away. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when you see the ads, they show like there's like eight people in the car going on vacation. You don't reach over and roll down the window. Yeah, exactly. No, no, no. That's what's kind Get of the fun. Slide but, or get out and go around. Uh, Need parts for your ride? Then check out this week's Classic Car Marketplace. Are you passionate about Corvettes or air-cooled Volkswagens? Pursue your passion here at Mid-America Motor Works. Call today toll-free to request your free Corvette or air-cooled Volkswagen catalog at 1-800-500-1500. That's 1-800-500-1500. Or visit our website, mamotorworks.com. If you're restoring a classic GM car or truck, Classic Industries has the largest inventory of original and reproduction parts and accessories in the business. Call 888-GM-CATALOG to get the catalog of your choice or go online to ClassicIndustries.com and start shopping today. See why Classic Industries is America's first choice in GM restoration and performance parts and accessories. 
Steel Rubber Products supplies only the highest quality restoration rubber parts. Call for your free 576-page catalog featuring a huge selection of the rubber parts you need when you need them. Call 1-800-834-7833 or visit their website at steelrubber.com. Steel Rubber Products, your complete solution for rubber parts and weather stripping. Still ahead, we're hanging out with Jay Leno and a couple of his early 50s Hudson Hornets. Welcome back to My Classic Car. Uh, this one here is my favorite Hudson. Uh, this is a uh, 53 Club Coupe, three-speed standard transmission with Two overdrive. Wow. Two-door. Two yeah, that, got everything. That's what I like. That's what I like. Well, it doesn't have everything because actually some people like the pillarless. This was the suspension that won all the uh, NASCAR races back in the uh, early 50s. You know, it's interesting. This car almost looks modern again. It looks like it could have been done by Audi. It looks like an yeah. Audi TT with the sloping roof. It does. And you've got these enormous chrome emblems like uh, here where it says Hornet in red. Look at these big giant things. I mean, on the back of the car here is a huge... Yeah, this is the one I like. I mean, this is... A, so what, what kind of car is it, Jay? A huge two-pound <laughs> chunk of chrome. It's a Hornet. It's a Hornet. <laughs> and you see, this came from the factory. Twin, twin H. H. has a twin H power. In fact, that's where, uh, that's where your money goes in restoring one of these cars. It's, it's re just, just trying to do the chrome. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's, it gets a little crazy. It gets a little crazy. Well, and, and again, there's so much of it. I mean, the front end of these things. And the classic Wurlitzer jukebox dashboard. If you marry a woman and she doesn't have a pretty face, you're going to be staring at it over the breakfast table the rest of your life. So, you know, find one that you like. You know, same and that's with what's dashboards, fun about, right? Same with dashboards. You look at that, it's just wonderfully reflective, all little bits. So this one's got the, this one's got the alternator on it? This has got an alternator. It's a three-speed manual with an overdrive. You know, the trouble with some of the early six-volt systems with the generator, you turn the key on, the headlights would be dim, you rev the engine, the headlights get a little bit brighter, and then any time you're off the gas, they dim again. Well, you don't have that problem anymore with a six-volt alternator. It keeps it right up. It's the top of the, you know, top of the voltage, so. You sort of lose that mood lighting thing. Yeah, you lose the mood lighting, but your radio works and your turn signal works and your, your brake lights and your stop lights. It's are a lot bright. more compact. The alternator would be about almost twice, uh, the generator would be about yeah, twice yeah. as long as that, right? You know, the cool thing, there's a very active Hudson Club and all this stuff is still available. These are the original stickers that came on the car and these, these kind of what make it a little bit for you if you're a car show kind of guy or if you just like to have, uh, you know, the period stuff. They make the decals, twin H power. I mean, all this stuff is still available. Now, is this pretty much the same engine as, as the Same the exact Yellow? engine, same exact engine, yeah, yeah. Uh, this, this came from the factory with twin H, with, because this was the, it was a, the fast model. Yeah, the Three speed, ride. as I yeah. said, overdrive, twin H power, uh, you know, 160 horsepower. But still the same. Uh, same, we have the winter. Yeah, the wipers are great. I love the wipers. <laughs> I love the wipe. But it is simple. I mean, this is a this is a car you can keep running forever, basically. Yeah, they do run forever, and they uh, they're reasonably fuel efficient. They're not bad. I probably get about 18 to 20 something like that with it. But it's a big car. It's a family car, and it's funny. A lot of these cars, as heavy as they are, are still not as heavy as a lot of modern cars, because obviously they don't have the safety features yeah, yeah, yeah. and all the other <laughs> stuff. But but uh, they're wonderful to drive. Let's take it for a spin. I'm all for that. Stay close, we're going for a spin in Jay Leno's twin H powered Hudson Hornet. Brought to you by Grundy Worldwide Collector Car Insurance. And by You Coat It, the official floor coating of Eastwood Garage. Welcome back to My Classic Car. Let's go blow off some Hemis. <laughs> That's good as acceleration. Huh? Surprising acceleration. Oh, yeah, not bad. Yeah, it goes pretty good. I mean, it's still cold. I'm not flooring it. And, uh, you know, no rattles. No, no it runs pretty no, good. It's kind of a bumpy road. You don't feel it? No, it's not bad at all. But as you can see, going into corners, it doesn't handle bad. Yeah, there's no roll to speak of. Not too bad. Well, you can speak of it. You can speak of it. I haven't, you haven't thrown me out yet. 
The nice thing is you don't have to apologize. Sorry, go around me. You know, you have to, you know, a lot of old cars. Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> Not to worry, it's, everything's fine, everything's fine. You know, I'm probably the last generation, and you may be too, Dennis, where your parents went for a Sunday drive. Joyriding. Yeah, That's that was what... the thing. We would go for a Sunday yeah. drive, because, you know, my dad had a 57 Plymouth he bought brand new with the big fins, and we would go for a Sunday. We would go to get corn, or we would drive to the country, look at some trees, come back. It and was, that was, that was entertainment. Yeah. That was, the inter that was family entertainment. Yeah, yeah, that's what you did. Yeah, I, I really do miss that, because that was, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. I mean, I saw a great ad the other day for some SUV where the family is going through the Grand Canyon and the kids are watching a DVD in the back. What are you doing? <laughs> Pay attention. There's a world out there. The Grand Canyon, you moron. <laughs> Well, this has been a blast, you know, cruising on the California freeway with Jay and a, and a 53 Hudson Hornet. Doesn't get much better than this. I'm sure he'll let me come back. I always slip in the back way anyway. Next week, we'll travel to the Vintage Grand Prix in Watkins Glen, New York. From Mini Coopers to F1 cars, the range of classic races at this event is incredible. Plus, we'll look at rotating assembly kits to upgrade your engine. So until our next meeting, remember, honor the timeless classics. I'm Dennis Gage. Happy motoring. Attention My Classic Car fans, go online now to check out our latest selection of DVDs. Order the MCC Legendary Fords, Legendary Chevys, or Legendary Mopars, or order the GM Special Vehicles Collection. Just can't get enough MCC? Now you can download your favorite MCC episodes from our website, or get all 26 episodes from a 2008 season in one DVD set.